Did you know at this very moment, someone is on Amazon and Etsy actively looking for a quality coloring and activity book to add to their shopping cart? The only question is, will it be yours? Since you're listening to this podcast, hence the name of the show, it's pretty safe to assume that you have a keen interest in creating and selling your first or next coloring book. And it's for that reason I want to assure you you're in the right place. And I'd like to help you make it a reality by inviting you to check out the Coloring Book Creator Mentor Program, the first of its kind complete A to Z course that features live weekly coaching, resources, templates, and an extremely supportive online community, all designed to assure that you create a standout in-demand coloring book that you'll actually enjoy creating, promoting, and selling. Imagine the feeling of knowing somewhere in the world someone is adding your beautiful new book to their shopping cart, investing in a piece of your creativity. Enrollment is open and you can get started by going to coloringbookcreatorcourse.com. That's coloringbookcreatorcourse.com. You're listening to the Coloring Book Creator Podcast, and this is a special episode that I'm doing for a new I guess I would call it maybe a column that I'm going to start doing on the podcast. I'm going to test it out for a little while called Ask Rodney. I get a lot of questions from new people who come into my world, my ecosystem, I guess, if you will. And one of the questions I always ask is, what are you wanting most right now? What are you needing help with? And what are you needing support with right now? And I've actually gotten quite a few really good questions. So this was an actual question that came in today through my Instagram which you can find me at the coloringbook.artist on Instagram. And I'll put the link inside of the show notes here if you'd like to come over and direct message me a question that I could potentially cover in a future episode. Again, of this new, I guess I'd call this a bonus episode. So these will be episodes that'll be a little different than the regular ones that I do. And again, this is going to be kind of like a column, if you will. I'm going to call it Ask Rodney. And I will be addressing at least one, maybe two questions. And these, again, will be posted as bonus episodes. So the question I received today is one I've gotten before, even from students and members of my Coloring Book Creator Mentor Program. So I've gotten this question before, but this one came in again through Instagram. It's one I've been asked before, and I wanted to address it. The question was, how can I digitize my artwork that I can turn into a book? One of the things that I do with my with my members of my Coloring Book Creator Mentor Program is address this question because I do have a few artists who actually create their own artwork. Now, I do have sources that I recommend to my members. Uh, one is Creative Fabrica, where you can source images that you can use for your coloring book. I'm going to put the link to that in the show notes. Another resource I recommend to my students is to hire a freelance illustrator on Fiverr, uh, which you can give them source images they can use for reference material, and they can do line drawing artwork for you for your book. So those are two resources that I do recommend, and I will put those inside the show notes. In addition to there is now a growing variety of artificial intelligence tools that are coming onto the scene that is also available for newbie coloring book authors or even people who have published a book but they need new artwork for new projects. A software program that I use is called Mid Journey. Again, I'll be doing a separate episode on AI related uh, tools in a future episode. I am planning that now. Uh, so Mid Journey is a tool that I've personally been testing and working with to help create line art uh, based pages for my book projects. I have also recently uh, discovered that Creative Fabrica now has an AI tool, I believe, called Spark. Again, I'll put that in the show notes. And Canva does have one as well, although I'm remiss in recommending that one in particular because I've not been that impressed with the results. So again, these are just a handful of tools that you could use if you want to consider AI. And again, I'm going to be doing something, a special episode on that in a future one. But again, I want to go back to addressing the question from the user on IG, Instagram, who asked me about being able to digitize her artwork. 
And so I'm going to give a couple of options here and then a third bonus one. So the first option, obviously, is that your artwork would have to be scanned. That's, of course, the most common way to digitize your artwork. But the question then becomes if you have access to a high quality scanner. Now, the number one reason why you'd want to obviously scan the images is because you need to get them into your computer so that you can then work with them inside of a software program like Canva, where you can lay the book out. But the thing with scanning your images, I'm assuming that you'll be doing black line art on white paper. So when you scan an image, it's not going to scan true white background with black lines. More often than not, you're going to have some gray scaling going on or some graying of the background, which means it will not read as pure or true white. So once you scan the image into your computer, you would need to take it through a software program like Adobe Photoshop or possibly Adobe Illustrator, but most likely in this case, Adobe Photoshop. And that is where you would then need to do additional adjustments in order to make your background pure white and have the line art be pure black, which again, when the scanning process, the black could read as a dark, dark gray. And then the background could read as a very soft or pale, uh, kind of a chalky uh, white, not pure white, which is what you would want for your coloring book, unless you're doing reverse where the background is black and the type is, or the line art is white. Even in that context, there's probably still going to require some cleanup of your image using an image editing software like a Photoshop or an Adobe Illustrator. Because again, depends upon how your scanner is calibrated. There, there's going to be some, there's going to be additional editing going to, is going to be required. So with that being said, assuming that you don't have a scanner or access to one or and or you don't have an image editing software program like a Photoshop or an Illustrator to do the additional adjustments that are going to be required, your next best bet is then to hire someone on a service like Fiverr to find someone that can do the cleanup for you. Now, what I did do was I did look up on Fiverr how to find someone that could specialize in Photoshop editing. And that's exactly what you would do. You'd go to Fiverr.com. I'll put the link in the show notes. And you would type in the search term Photoshop editing. And that will yield you a variety of providers that you could contract with, that you could send your images over to them and have them cleaned up. So then the question becomes, how do you get the images that you send them? So going back to option one, if you scan the images on using a scanner on your computer, if you have a scanner or you farm it out to like an outside service, like a Kinko's as an example, then you would have the images scanned and then you would then get those images on say a, a flash drive or something of that nature. And then that's how you would upload those images to a Photoshop editor on Fiverr, telling them what you need to have done and let them do the cleanup for you. Again, to make sure that the backgrounds read pure white, the lines are pure black. So that is, uh, I guess, the secondary way that you can, again, if you don't have a scanner of your own at home, but you do need to get the images cleaned up, you could hire someone on Fiverr to do it. I will also go so far as to say this, even if you do have a scanner and even if you do have the skills Depending upon how many images you're going to place in your book, you might actually still want to go ahead and farm that out anyway, because again, unless you're an expert at this or you've got the patience or the understanding or the time, it could take you a little while to clean those images up so that again, you've got pure white backgrounds with clean black lines. Even if you do have the time and the software and the expertise for it, you still might opt to hire someone on Fiverr to do the cleanup for you. Again, I can't recommend anyone in particular on Fiverr. I would just say, again, go there and type in Photoshop editing in the search. And there's a variety of options there. Perhaps send the one thing I would recommend is send maybe a couple of different people, maybe three people to do a test. 
give them all in one image to do. Tell them specifically and distinctly and clearly what you want and let them do the work and see which one comes back with, with the best result at a price point that you are willing and able to pay. I cannot recommend how much you would spend for that. Again, I would just go and see if you could find someone that can do that for you. And I do know there are resources on Fiverr that can do that for you. The other option you can do, this is option two, if you don't have a scanner, you could possibly photograph your line art with your camera phone. You want to make sure that each piece that you photograph, you want to make sure that it's in full frame and that it's close. You need to be able to get close in on the image so that the details and all of that are going to be displayed. So you could try that as an option to photograph with your camera phone, your artwork. The number one thing that you would need to have is good lighting. So make sure that you do have that available to you. You are able to do some editing inside of your camera phone. I have an Apple iPhone, so I know I'm able to do some editing in there, but it still may not be exactly what you would need or want for your coloring book. So again, if you don't have a scanner and you don't want to go out and say, use a service like a Kinko's to do that, then the next option is to photograph your artwork. Again, just make sure that it's in full frame and that you're getting all sides of the image and as, as close as possible without losing any of the edges or the borders. And then again, those photographs could then be sent to someone that you test on fiber to complete the process in terms of cleaning up the image and so forth. So that's the next option that you have. I'm going to take a break before I give you the third option to just share something with you that you may or may not be aware of. Did you know that you can actually repurpose the designs from your pages and place them on additional products like luggage, sneakers, tote bags, even socks, and a variety of other items that are available available to you, a whole library of items that are available to you that you can repurpose your designs. And the interesting thing that you may not be aware of is that you can typically 10 to 40x your profit margin by being able to offer your existing coloring page designs on a variety of other ancillary products. So as you're looking at and exploring the different ways that you can repurpose your artwork, if you're not thinking about or thinking on those lines, this is something that you really want to put onto your, your, your thinking cap and actually have available in your toolkit. And it's one of the features and the things that I talk about inside my Coloring Book Creator Mentor Program. As a matter of fact, I have a whole course on how to publish your designs on a variety of different products and be able to sell them on sites like Etsy or Shopify or your own website, even through social media apps where you can set up your own store inside of, say, Instagram, for an example. So again, many people, when they think about additional products, they think about or print on demand products as, as it's well known. They think of typically T-shirts and coffee mugs, but there is explosive growth in print on demand that has opened a door for a wide variety of high value products that you can place your designs on. So if this is something that you'd like to know more about, in addition to publishing or as you are producing your book, I would like to invite you to schedule a 15 minute, no pressure conversation with me to explore your coloring book idea or project and explore if the coloring book creator mentor program is right for you. Now, the thing I want to make, I'm very clear about, this is no pressure conversation, just an opportunity for us to connect one-on-one -on -one and explore if I can be of service to you and if we're possibly a right fit to work together. So you'd like to explore the variety of additional ancillary product income streams that you could develop based on your book. Again, I want to invite you to reach out to me on Instagram. I'll put the link in the show notes. We can schedule a 15 minute conversation and see if we're fit to work together. Again, no pressure whatsoever. All right, back to the episode. The third option I'm going to recommend to you is only going to be applicable to listeners if you are on the Apple platforms, if you are using an iPad and you could do it with an iPhone, but I would recommend an iPad, what you could do is photograph your artwork the same as an option two. And you can use a software tool called Procreate. And Procreate will allow you to open the image up in the software. 
This one I'm getting ready to suggest is a little bit more advanced. So again, you would have to have Procreate. You'd have to understand how to use the tool. But what I do know of it is that it works similar to Photoshop where you would have layers. So without going too far down the rabbit hole with it, Photoshop, basically each element of your image could be on a separate layer and each layer lays on top of the other one. Procreate acts very similar. So what you would do is say, take your, obviously iPads have cameras on them. So you would take a photograph of your image using the camera on your iPad. You would open it up in Procreate. You could add a layer on top of it. So it's, it's like you're laying another sheet on top of the sheet of your artwork. All this is all in, inside of the iPad. And you could make that top layer be white. Then there's a way to change the opacity of that layer so that the image underneath, i.e. your original artwork, bleeds through. You can see it. So the lower the opacity, the more of the image shows up. So you want enough of it that you can clearly see all the details and everything. Now, this one I'm getting ready to tell you is a little bit more painstaking, and you may not choose to do any of this, but I just want to put out there as an option. So again, with the image underneath the layer on top that you change the opacity to make the image beneath bleed through or show through, then you would use the Apple Pencil. And then again, you would need to understand how to use Procreate to do any of this. And again, this isn't a Procreate lesson. I don't teach Procreate. So you would have to figure this part out on your own. But what I would say is, uh, using your Apple Pencil and certain brush stroke marks within the Procreate software, you can trace your original artwork onto this new layer. So again, you've got like a sheet of paper on top that is more translucent so that the artwork, the original artwork is showing through. You would then use the Procreate tool to then trace your whole artwork out. And essentially what you're doing is you're recreating the original page using this tool. Then once you have got it as, as close to exactly what you want, then you would then essentially change the opacity back to a pure white so that the black lines that you created is still layered on top. And then you can delete the, the original image underneath. Now, again, you would have to have an iPad. You would have to have the Procreate software and you would have to have an Apple Pencil, and you would have to understand how to use Procreate to be able to do all of this. What I would recommend that you do to go over all three options again, probably the easiest and most efficient one is option one, scan your images through a flatbed scanner. Either you own one of your own or you farm it out to a service like a Kinko's, that's option two. Then you would either use Photoshop yourself to clean up your images, meaning that you want to make sure that the background is not a gray or off-white or off-gray, but a pure solid white, and that the, the line art is a pure black. If you don't have Photoshop, then the next option to do is then to send it out to Fiverr and have it done there. You would go to Fiverr and type in Photoshop editing, and you would find a myriad of different people that you could potentially get them to do it for you. Maybe pick a couple of them, send out one image to them, have do a test to make sure they can give you what you want, and then send them the rest of your artwork to be able to do that for you. They're going to give you back a digital file. I would recommend that that file be a PNG file which is a higher resolution web image. If it's a PSD file, which is a Photoshop native, it's a Photoshop native file. If you don't have Photoshop, you can't use it. And the other thing that you also don't want is for them to send you a, P a PDF file. Because again, in order to assemble your images inside of a book file, which you would most likely make in Canva, that's what I, I teach about in the, in the Coloring Book Creator Mentor Program, I show all my students how to lay their book out in Canva. Well, the only two image types that you can upload to Canva is either a JPEG or a PNG. And I always, always would recommend that you do a PNG. It's a bit, it's a higher resolution file. And anyone who's doing your editing for you on Fiverr can give you a PNG file. 
So make sure that when you hire someone to do that, is that they deliver it back to you as a PNG file. That way there's not going to be any issue with Canva and you uploading that image to that software in order to be able to lay out your final book. If you have the whole Apple system, you've got the iPad, you've got Procreate. Again, I'll put the links to all of this inside the show notes. You can go check it out. Then that could be a third option, but just know that's going to take you some time to do. But the advantage of possibly getting familiar with Procreate and using that system is that you could potentially start to create your original artwork pages if you're hand drawing and you're fine with drawing digitally, then you could do the original future pages in Procreate to begin with, and then it's a done issue. There's nothing to go and digitize later because you already created the original artwork inside of a software program like Procreate. And again, Procreate is only for the Apple platform. So I want to make sure that I'm really clear about that. At the time I'm recording this, this may change in future, but at the time I'm recording this, the Procreate program is only available for Apple users. All righty. So there you have it. Those are your three options for digitizing your artwork. Um, Feel free if you do do this and you do want to share the results or what came of this, if you're listening to this episode and you want to share the results of what you've done. I have a fa- a free Facebook group called Coloring Book Creator Live. And if you, I'll put the link to that in the show notes. It's a free Facebook group and you can join that group. And if you'd like to share maybe an image or two from what you're going to put in your book, that would be great. I'd love to give you some feedback and support. And that's basically what I have for you. I want to start doing this at least a couple of times a month. I want to do a bonus episode where I take a viewer question and address it on a special podcast episode. This one went a little longer than maybe I wanted it to be, but I wanted to make sure I covered all the options. I look forward to seeing what else comes through. I have some links here in the show notes. If you're interested, I know I've spoken about the Coloring Book Creator Mentor Program. If you're interested in that, there's a link there that you can go check that out. And I would love to support you that way. And again, a link to my Facebook group, Cumber Creator Live. Thank you for your questions. I look forward to seeing uh, more questions come through. If you want to send me a question about anything related to coloring, coloring books, anything we're doing with marketing your book, or anything of that nature, follow me on Instagram at coloringbook.artist. And you can DM me a question there and I will uh, store it for future uh, Ask Rodney uh, bonus episodes of the podcast. So with that said, this is Rodney Washington, your host, signing off. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the show. There are a lot of podcasts you could be listening to. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you because I don't take your time for granted. Before you go, I'd like to ask if you found the interview you just heard valuable, that you share the show. You know, the more listeners means more creators like you can have the tools and resources and inspiration to create beautiful, meaningful coloring and activity books. Lastly, if you or someone you know has been thinking about creating a book, invite them to check out a special on-demand training where I'll help future authors uncover a sellable coloring book idea. Think of it like an idea jumpstarter kit for finding, validating, and developing your first or next coloring book idea, and it can be yours for just $10. You can snag your copy at coloringbookidea.com.